<clears throat> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. That really sounds terrible. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. Just before we get started, I really do apologise for making you have to listen to me when my voice sounds like this. Um, I have had a cold the past few days and I mean I'm kind of past the worst of it I think, um, but probably still got a few more days of the voice sounding like this. Uh, probably not great my voice is already quite low uh, in videos and now it's even lower and because i sound like this and i also don't feel that great this video is going to be quite a quick and quite a quick and simple one it's going to be about the xt32 i know a lot of you guys are into your fuji cameras and specifically the xt30 some of you may be interested in buying it some of you may have already got one and i know the xt32 coming out may have confused some of you who already have the xt30 or some of you who were looking at getting the xt30 you may be wondering why is there another one why is it pretty much the same price what exactly changed should which one should i get i'm just going to run through the main differences and give my opinion on whether or not you should get the xt32 so what are the differences i think that's the biggest question when it comes to the xt32 and um, why is there a new one and what are the differences first of all the new xt32 has two new film simulations it has classic neg and eterna bleach bypass so if you're someone who likes either of those film stocks then those two will be added to the list of film simulations that were already there on the xt30 so you will have two new ones to play around with if you're not really a fan of either of those film simulations or you don't use them at all then it won't really make a difference to you so the auto mode on the xt32 has been upgraded um, now when you're in auto mode the camera will sort of decide on colors and tones and change things a little bit depending on the environment you're in i didn't look too in depth into this but i think it's probably something similar to you know the way if you have your phone camera and your video on something and sometimes it'll pop up greens and make things look real vivid and stuff or landscape or whatever um, it changes i think that's what it sort of is with axt 32 it sort of adjusts things a little bit to get what it thinks is the best result in the conditions that you're in if you're someone who shoots in manual mode all the time and not auto or you shoot in raw then this probably won't really make much of a difference to you another addition to the xt32 is another choice of frame rate at 1080p so you now have 240 frames per second at 1080 whereas the original xt30 only had 120 frames at 1080 so you have another slow motion option even slower again with the 240 frames per second i mean it's cool that they added it i've never really felt the need to shoot much more than 120 frames per second but if you shoot sports or if you just really want to slow things down then you now have an option to go even slower again with the 240 frames a second which i suppose is kind of cool another update to the xt32 is better low light focusing um, if you're someone that shoots a lot of photos or video at night um, then this may be something that interests you personally i thought the original xt30 done okay in low light but that will now be improved with the xt30 and you'll be able to focus better in those low light scenarios for both photo and video so sticking with the focusing they have updated the focus tracking so if you're someone who does a lot of sport photography or nature photography or videography and um, when you're tracking say an animal running across the screen or a bird flying whatever and um, that should be improved now if that's something that is important to you the lcd screen on the back of the camera has been updated it has now got a higher resolution um i found the original xt30 screen to be more than enough never noticed any problems with it it always seemed sharp and stuff to me but it is now improved which i suppose is always a good thing and just to finish it off they do offer two different kit lenses the same with the xt30 and um, you have the xf 18 to 55 mil and i believe it's the xc 15 to 45 mil i think if that's wrong i'll, I'll have it on screen uh, but same options as the xt30 okay so what does that all mean i'm sure that is the question that a lot of you might be asking if i want to buy myself a fuji xt30 should i buy the original xt30 should i buy the xt32 and i think there is sort of two answers to the question if you're someone who already has the fuji film xt30 like we do um i don't think it's really worth your time selling that or trying to trade up to get an xt32 because i don't feel like the differences are enough the xt32 obviously has the two new film simulations but from reading around a little bit and comments on different things a lot of people believe that that might be added to the original xt30 in a firmware update 
The updates to the auto mode I would say is aimed more at beginner users so if you are one of those then this might be a benefit to you but for most people I feel like when you're shooting you're probably in manual mode or somewhat manual most of the time so then this won't really apply to you. The upgraded LCD screen I don't really think makes a lot of difference at all. I don't think it's worth your time changing from the X-T30 to the X-T32 just to get a higher resolution LCD screen in my opinion. The two upgrades which I think are probably the most important are the add at slow mo option with the 240 frames per second and also the upgrades to focusing. Um, again, I'm not sure if those will be added to the original XT30 and firmware updates, but those are the two upgrades that I believe would have the biggest impact if I could take two of them and install them on my XT30. Uh, those would be the two that I would pick. So just to sum up that first answer, if you do have the original X-T30, I don't think it's worth your while upgrading to the X-T32. Just wait and see and maybe with future updates, a lot of those things will be added to the original X-T30. And now on to answer two, if you're someone that's been in the market for a Fujifilm X-T30. I know you see the X-T32 coming out and you're not sure which one should I get. Um, I think you should just go for the X-T32. Um, I was looking at different prices and trying to compare prices it's pretty much the same. The most of the difference I could see was like £50, $50 difference. But if you search around, you might get a deal and it, then it's pretty much the same price and you're just getting some extra upgrades. Some of which may be added to the original X-T30, some may not. We, we don't really know yet, but just go for the X-T32 and you'll have the most up-to-date version with the added upgrades and stuff. And you also have the same options when it comes to the color. Um, you can go black, silver or the vintage silver look. Um, so yeah, it, it just makes sense to get the X-T32. Yeah, that is pretty much it for this one. I just thought it was something that you guys might find helpful. It is a little bit of a strange camera release, so I knew some of you guys may be wondering what, what the deal is with that. But yeah, I'm definitely going to stop blabbering now because I don't want to have to make you listen to my voice anymore. I'm probably going to go make a cup of tea and probably should have a green tea, but I don't think we have any. Um, yeah, anyway back next week with a better video hopefully i don't sound like this i better not sound like this um, anyway if you enjoyed this one or if you found it helpful make sure to give the video a thumbs up consider subscribing if you want to see more and yeah hope you all had a nice halloween as we always say take it easy don't be a stranger <laughs>